Any announcements or introductions? Representative Hooten or Sane, do you want to tell us about the cook-off? When? What? Why? <laughs> Representative Sane. That's a lot of questions this late in the evening, Madam Speaker, but I will try to answer them as best as I can. Um, so members, uh, we're going to try to get our judges here as fast as possible. Uh, we were thinking we were working a little bit later this evening, so we're waiting for our judges. And therefore, the judges will eat first, and we will do that by number. It's a blind taste test, so please do not attach your marketing materials until the judging has concluded, and we will let you know as soon as the judging has concluded. At that time, you can attach your marketing materials, and you may also eat and use the ballots provided at your desk for best in R caucus and best in D caucus, which will also have bragging rights. Representative Jackson, wait your turn. <laughs> she stole my box the other day, too, so. This seems to be a pattern, Madam Speaker. I asked the Ethics Commission to look into this. <laughs> Representative Jackson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I would like all of you to know, especially those members who were not here last year, I did not get any chili because I was cheering. I got no chili. Moi so non plus. I, I move that Representative Jackson gets to go first. I didn't get any chili either, Representative Jackson. Hey. I move that Madam Speaker and Representative Jackson <laughs> get to go first. Any other not Representative Singh? I think there's a short title coming to this particular session. It's all about Jackson. <laughs> Does the members agree? Do I get a second? All right, any other Representative? Okay. Any other announcements or introductions? Does... Majority Leader Garnett, want to tell us what we're doing? I can go if you want. <laughs> Vice
Van Winkle is a, apparently very happy to tell us what we're going to do. Oh. No, Madam Speaker, <laughs> but I would like a moment. We keep using a word here, and we've used it over and over again. Members keep calling themselves freshmen. Members, you are not freshmen. You are not in high school. You are elected by your district. You have one vote, same as the majority leader, same as the minority leader, same as the speaker. You represent your district. You are elected by your district, the same as everyone else. No one is a freshman in this House of Representatives. We have rookies. Majority Leader Garnett. <laughs> Wookies or rookies? <laughs> We're going into special orders. Who's in the chair? OK. So we will continue the special orders, second reading of bills calendar. Representative Kraftharp. <laughs> you have heard the most unfortunate message. <laughs> All, um, seeing no objection, Representative Kraftharp will take the chair.
Um, Representative Kraftharp. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem Pro Tem. <laughs> I withdraw my motion to move it to the Committee of the Whole. The House will come back to order. Uh, members, just so you know what's going on, we wanted to read the reports of the committees of reference from this afternoon so that we can make sure we're considering whatever bills may be available here. Uh, Mr. Randall, reports of committees of reference. Committee on Education, after continuation of the merits of the committee, was following. Senate Bill 7 to be approved the committee of favor recommendation. Senate Bill 170, Committee on Finance, after continuation of the merits of the committee, was following. Senate Bill 177 be referred favorably to the committee on appropriations. Committee on State, Veterans, and Military Affairs, after continuation of the merits of the committee, was following. Senate Bill 232 be referred favorably to the committee on appropriations. Senate Bill 236 be amended as follows. And SMA be referred to the committee on finance with favorable recommendation. Senate Bill 244 be referred favorably to the committee on appropriations. Printing report. Chief Clerk, the printing report book. will be printed in the journal. Message from the Senate. Madam Speaker, the Senate has Message passed. from the Senate will be printed in the journal. Message from the reviser. We're here with transmit. Message from the reviser will be printed in the journal. I think. I think we need to wait one second, because any allocations to add bills to the special orders count. Is that not what you do? All right, thank you everyone. And just to clarify, we're not actually adding bills to the special orders calendar for tonight. We are just getting the reports read so that we can get bills moving for the Appropriations Committee tomorrow. Representative Kraftharp, here to give it another go. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem Pro Tem. Again, with great disappointment and dismay, I move that we move ourselves into the Committee of the Whole for special orders. Seeing no objection, the House will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for consideration of special orders. come to order. Oh, here. <laughs> With your unanimous consent, the bills will be read by title unless there is a request for reading a bill at length. Committee amendments will not be read unless requested as they are printed in your bill folders and on your iPads. Floor amendments will be shown on the screen and not read unless requested. Bills will be laid over upon the motion of the majority leader and the code and tie rule is relaxed. <laughs> Mr. Randall, let's read the title for House Bill 1329. House Bill 1329 by Representatives Arndt and McKean, also Senator Sonnenberg, concerning the sales and use tax treatment of certain wholesale sales related to the production of agricultural products. Representative Arndt. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move House Bill 1329 on the committee report. And is that the Finance Committee report and the Appropriations Committee report? That is actually. And so <laughs> after we, so can we move the appropriations report? We moved the appropriations committee report, and that was when we clarified that we took out the word livestock and added ag commodities to clarify that this bill is for ag commodities. I urge an I vote. Is there any further discussion on the appropriations committee report? Representative Williams. Don't worry, this will be a quicker one. Representative Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a good bill. Uh, members, uh, I actually don't have a problem with this bill, but I just wanted to make sure that we're very apprised of what we're doing here, so I'd like to look at this report a little bit, maybe share with you what it actually has to say. Is that the Appropriations Committee report, uh, Mr. Representative Williams? Oh. oh, excuse me, I stand corrected. That's missing from my bill folder. Okay, we'll see you in a I'll little wait. bit. Yeah. Is there any further discussion on... <laughs> The Appropriations Committee report. Seeing none, the question before us, members, is the passage of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Appropri yeah. Appropriations Committee report does pass. To the Finance Committee report, Representative McKean. Well, I thank you, Madam Chair. What an absolute delight and honor it is to serve with you and, and to serve with you on Business Committee, which is the best committee that there is. To the bill. Move it along, Representative McKean. Finance Committee report. We showed up there. We said some stuff. But what we really did was we made sure that we amended a section to talk about specialty fertilizer so that we were not exempting certain specialty fertilizer, like bags of fertilizer you're going to take out of a, of a Home Depot, whatever you call it like that. 
I would ask for an aye vote. Any further discussion on the Finance Committee report? Representative Williams is at the Finance Committee report. That's the one. Okay, what do you got? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I unfortunately won't be saying ditto today. <laughs> so, members, the House Committee of Reference report. This was dated April 24th, 2019. Committee on Finance. After consideration on the merits, the committee recommends the following. HB 19-1329 be amended as follows, and as so amended, be referred to the Committee on Appropriations with favorable recommendation. Amend printed bill, page two, after line one, insert, section one. In Colorado Revised Statutes 35-12-103, amend the introductory portion and 30 as follows. 35-12-103 definitions as used in this Article 12, unless the context otherwise requires, specialty fertilizer means a commercial fertilizer distributed primarily for non-farm use, such as home gardens, lawns, shrubbery, flowers, golf courses, parks, and cemeteries. Of course, we're crossing out right here, members, this is quite important here, we're crossing out greenhouses, hydroponic facilities, and nurseries. Renumber succeeding sections accordingly. Page two, after line 15, insert section three, applicability. This act applies to sales occurring prior to, on, or after the effective date of this act. Renumber succeeding section accordingly. Members, I wanted to make sure you were fully aware of what the report said before we voted on it. And I do want to commend the bill sponsors because I actually don't have any issues with this bill. It's quite a good piece of work here. Representative McKean. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, I, I don't like it when people do an incomplete job, and, and, and really, Representative Williams left off the most important part. <coughs> Folks, at the bottom of this is a barcode, and under the barcode it says HB1329HFIN001. So if we're going to do something, we probably ought to complete the task. I ask for an I vote. So reminding everyone we have chili as when we get completed, Representative Humphrey, what would you like to say? Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I had a few questions about this uh, committee of reference report, but um, I think that Representative Williams has answered those all for me. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Humphrey. Any further discussion on the Finance Committee report? Seeing none, Representative Arndt. We urge a yes vote on the Finance Committee report. Uh, specialty fertilizer is the fertilizer you pay taxes on when you go to your local uh, store to come home and fertilize your tomatoes, your potatoes, your garden stuff. When fertilizer is an input in an ag product, it is exempt from taxation, and that's what this uh, amendment clarified. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the Finance Committee report? Seeing none. The question before us is the passage of the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Finance Committee report passes to the bill. Representative McKean. Uh, thank you very, very much, Madam Chair. So we present to you today House Bill 1329. Um, it, is, it is literally to make sure that we only tax the things that are appropriate to be taxed. When we talk about wholesale inputs to agricultural commodities, we are talking about things that are used to grow stuff. I think that's the best way to say it. And that means that those, those fertilizers get drawn up into those plants and they become a part of the plant that gets sold. It should be a wholesale input, not tax. That's what this is about. However, we do have one little thing that we need to do here, folks, and that is just make sure that we're talking about exactly the right products. So in that vein, I move Amendment L004 and ask for it to be properly displayed. Vain. <laughs> L004 is properly explained. Please explain, Representative Art. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. This came from the Department of Revenue just to absolutely, you know how we like to do in this building, absolutely double, triple make sure that we're talking about ag commodities and nothing else as an input to uh, end product that will be taxed at the point of sale. So we urge an I vote on L004. Thank you. Any further discussion on L004, Representative Lewis? Thank you, Madam Chair. So I have a question to the bill sponsors. Uh, Articles 11 and 12 of Title 44, without us having to go look that up, we explain what that is? Sure, Representative McKean. 
Um, thank you very much, Representative Lewis. And this is the amazing thing is when I get asked a question, I answer it. Um, what that really is is cultivation of marijuana, which is not treated as an agricultural crop. Any further discussion on L004? Seeing none. The question before us is the uh, passage of L004. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. L004 passes. We're back to the bill. Representative Humphrey. And thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I rise uh, in strong support of this bill. Uh, Agfinity, um, which uh, is in uh, my district as well as um, um, a, a number of other districts, uh, quite a few, um, in Eaton, contacted us in March. Agfinity is one of the largest agricultural uh, cooperatives in Colorado. And agricultural inputs have traditionally been exempt from sales tax. However, the Department of Revenue changed the rule, um, which had the effect of dropping a huge new tax burden on our uh, ag producers, um, which would, will cause significant economic hardship um, on our ag producers. So um, we need to pass this bill now so as not to place um, Colorado Ag at a competitive uh, disadvantage. So, and I, I thank um, uh, the Senate and, and um, Jerry Sonnenberg for getting this late bill out and um, um, encourage an I vote. Thank you. Representative Pelton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, agriculture is huge in my district. I have been a farmer in the past. I've bought fertilizer. And right now, with the commodity market where it is, margins are very, very thin. And just the tax on fertilizer could push some uh, producers into default. So we need to continue this. It, it's never been taxed, so we need to just continue this. Thank you. Representative Landgraf. Oh, Representative Art, you want to go first? Uh, thank you for your support on this bill. Uh, this is not Senator Sonnenberg's bill. This is uh, Art McKean bill. Thank you. Representative Landgraf. Thank you, Madam Chair. This bill is very aromatic. In fact, it downright stinks. And as for the committee, they ironed out all the kinks. Vote yes. Representative Lewis. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I don't think I can really follow that. Uh, thank you, Representative Landgraf. Uh, I do live in a rural district. Farmer, farming is a big part of what we do there. Number one deal of what we do there. This bill would certainly help. Right now, commodities are down. Prices of, of grains are down. Um, this, this will really help. I urge the whole House to vote yes. Representative Liston. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I have a question for the bill sponsor. I'm curious. Madam Chairwoman? That was that Madam Chairwoman? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes, Madam Chairwoman. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chairwoman or person, whatever. Um, I have a question of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Representative Liston. I'm listening. Um, I have a question of uh, uh, Representative McKean. Uh, I'm curious. Does this uh, exemption apply to natural um, fertilizers or man-made fertilizers, chemical fertilizers? Representative McKean. Um, thank you very much, Representative Liston. Um, are you asking if this applies to sheep shit? To, uh, yes, natural uh, fertilizers from... Uh, so I would suggest this applies to any input in an agricultural commodity that helps that commodity grow. So it would be safe to say that uh, this bill really stinks. Stinks. OK, thank you. This bill stinks. I urge an I vote. Both of you. Thank you. Representative Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, members, I, uh, like I said, I don't have a, any issue with this bill. And I'll certainly take the word of Representative McKean and the um, other members who have spoken in favor of it. And I'll ur also urge an I vote on it. But I do want to give a shout out to Representative McKean. When we do stuff, we do want to do it in a complete fashion. And so I apologize for that earlier, missing the barcode part of it. <laughs> so uh, members, let's get this right. So this is the first page of the bill, minus the amendment. I'll, I'll spare you the amendment and just take your word for it, Representative McKean. 
So we'll start at the top here. First regular session, 72nd General Assembly, State of Colorado, introduced. <laughs> LLS number 19-1115.01, Greg Frazier, extension 4325, House Bill 19-1329, House Sponsorship, Arndt and McKean, Senate Sponsorship, Sonnenberg. But members, it's an Arndt and a McKean bill, not a Sonnenberg bill. House Committees, it's Finance. A bill for an act concerning the sales and use tax treatment of certain wholesale sales related to the production of agricultural products. Bill summary. No. This summary applies to this bill as introduced and does not reflect any amendments that may be subsequently adopted. If this bill passes third reading in the House of Introduction, a bill summary that applies to the re-engrossed re version of this bill will be available at leg.colorado.gov. Wholesale Sales are not subject to sales and use taxes. The bill includes sales of fertilizer used in the production of agriculture and livestock products and the, and the definition of wholesale sales for sales and use tax purposes. The bill further specifies that for purposes of defining a wholesale sale, spray ad, ad, adjuvants may be sold for use in the production of agricultural and livestock products. Be it enacted by the General Assembly of the State of Colorado, Section 1 in Colorado Revised Statutes 39-26-102, add 19E and 19F as follows. 39-26-102 definitions as used in this Article 26 unless the context otherwise requires. 19E, wholesale sale includes sales of fertilizer for use in the production of agriculture and livestock products. For purposes of this sub subsection, 19E, fertilizer means fertilizer as defined in section 35-12-10312, but not including specialty fertilizer as defined in section, and wait for it, 35-12-10330. F, wholesale sale includes sales of spray adjuvants for use in the production of agricultural and livestock products for purposes of the subsection 19F. Spray adjuvants means products that are used to increase the effectiveness of a pesticide. Section 2, safety clause. The General Assembly hereby finds, determines, and declares that this act is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, and safety. And members, that's what I want to get to tonight. This bill, I don't have a problem with it. Not really. Other than that, the section two, as you can see it on page two, House Bill 19-1329, the safety clause. Members, now I know fertilizer is important. I know it's extremely important, especially to our agricultural industry and business sector. But is this really the, is this really necessary for the immediate preservation of public peace, health, and safety? Members, I don't know if that's the case. It probably should have a petition clause. I'm sure, I'm sure many members in my caucus would agree. However, there doesn't seem to be a real push to fix that, and that's a shame, members. Because I feel like the safety clause is abused, especially with one-page bills like this, which really don't need the safety clause. But I digress, and for the sake of time, I think it's probably important Representative McKean, that we discuss the revised fiscal note. Now, the original fiscal note on this, oh, excuse me, excuse me, Representative Arndt and McKean, I apologize, I apologize. <laughs> so there was a revised fiscal note from the original fiscal note, was, uh, which was first developed on April 24th, 2019. This was developed by our good folks down on Legislative Council staff, nonpartisan services for Colorado's legislature. The revised fiscal note, members for HB 19-1329. Drafting number, LLS 19-11115. Prime sponsors, Representative Arndt and McKean, Senator Sonberg. The bill status as of April 29th was House Appropriations. Of course, we heard about that on the earlier report that was passed. The fiscal analyst was Meredith Moon. Her extension is 2633. Bill topic, wholesale sales agricultural fertilizer tax exemption. Summary of the fiscal impact. As you can see, members, on page one, it is important. I know Representative Geithner is all about this. There's a check mark on state revenue. There's also a check mark on local government. 
but not on state expenditures, not on state transfer, not on Tabor refund, not on statutory public entity. The bill includes fertilizer and spray adjuvants used for agricultural purposes as wholesale sale products, thereby exempting them from state sales tax. Members, there is no appropriation required for this bill. That's what the appropriation summary says. And the fiscal note status, of course, this is the revised fiscal note, which reflects the bill as amended by the House Finance Committee. And as you can see, the Table 1 state fiscal impacts under this bill are as follows. For the fiscal year 2019-20, shows here from the general fund, under the first row here, revenue, at least 700 and 90, or excuse me, 792,500 at least. And of course that follows into fiscal year 2020-2021. Now we go on to page two of here of this bill. Talk about the summary of the legislation. This bill includes the sale of fertilizer and spray adjuvants for the use in agricultural and livestock production as wholesale sale pro products, which exempt them from state sales and use tax. Specialty fertilizer is not included in this exemption. However, greenhouses, nurseries, hydroponic facilities are no longer included under this definition of specialty fertilizers. I know Representative Humphrey knows all about that. Background, until 2014, the fertilizer for agricultural producers was exempt from sales, state sales tax based on rules promulgated by the Department of Revenue. The exemption clarified in the rules, or in, in the rules was removed in 2014, leaving no statutory or rules-based language to exempt fertilizers from state sales tax. Based on the 2017 U.S. Department of Agriculture's agricultural census, there was a whopping 461 million in total fer fertilizer and chemical expenses in 2017 in Colorado, down, down, members from 493.8 million in the 2012 census. Assumptions. Under the 2014 rule change, approximately 89% of agricultural producers are currently receiving a sales tax exemption upon the purchase of fertilizer for agricultural use based on the state auditor's 2019 report, Agricultural Inputs, Sales Tax Exemptions. It is assumed that the same percentage of producers are receiving an exemption on spray adjuvants. I'm not pronouncing that right, but I don't care. Uh, marijuana is assumed to receive the sales tax exemption under the specialty fertilizer definitional change in this bill. However, however, it is unknown to what extent marijuana producers are receiving uh, the exemption currently. Additionally, data, data are not available to estimate the total cost of fertilizers used as an input for marijuana production. Therefore, the fiscal impact may be higher may be higher than the revenue amount shown in table, table one. State revenue. The bill decreases general fund revenue by at least $792,500 in fiscal year 2019-20. We, of course, we discussed that earlier, members, on the first page. But just to refresh your memory, fiscal year 2021, or 20 through 2021 is the same with similar reductions in future years. This includes only the sales tax revenue for those agricultural producers who are presumed to not be receiving the exemption currently. This revenue is subject to TABOR. That's the Taxpayer Bill of Rights for, the, for those of you who don't get the, uh, get the acronym there. No, TABOR refund is expected in fiscal year 2019-20 or fiscal year 2020-21. The bill will reduce TABOR refunds in future years for which a refund occurs. Local government Members, local government, we always love local government. This bill was, will decrease sales tax revenue for state collected local taxing jurisdictions and special districts that have adopted the state's sales tax base depending on the amount of fertilizer and spray adjuvants sold in each jurisdiction. Effective date, the bill takes effect upon the signature of the governor. Why, may you ask, why? Is because of safety clause. Or upon becoming law without a signature. Still, because of the safety clause. No petition clause on this. So the page three of the revised fiscal note, members, which was dated on April 29, 2019, for a House Bill 19-1329, has a little 
section here that talks about state and local government contacts. Agriculture, revenue, county, special districts, municipalities, regional transport, transportation district. Members, it's been wonderful discussing this bill with you. I've learned more about fertilizer than I thought I'd ever know. And I want to thank the bill sponsors first, Representative Arndt and Representative McKean for bringing this bill forward. I will defer to my colleagues who are in support of this bill and also encourage an I vote because I think it's important, members. Despite my objections with the safety clause, I still think this is probably worth a yes vote. And I would absolutely love to hear more if anyone wants to talk about it, although I doubt that's going to happen. But thank you, nevertheless, members, for this robust discussion. Here, let me go first. You Representative go McKean. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, Madam Chair, Mrs. Chair, I actually said, which is a little weird. Ms. Um, um, Representative Williams, I, I guess I'm trying to distill down the, the incredibly cogent and, and pertinent argument that you made. Is it that you would prefer to have a petition clause on this bill? You can just answer from there. Hugh, uh, Hugh, what are you doing? Representative Arndt. What's the bill? Representative Arndt. Thank you, Madam Chair. I urge a yes vote. We are to the bill, and I want to thank Representative Williams for his support of the bill. Let's go. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Representative Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I certainly respect uh, Representative McKean's uh, question. Like Representative McKean, I too like to answer questions when asked. Um, I think that's more of a function of the minority. Can't say that for anyone else. But in any event, yes, I do prefer a petition clause because I just don't think it has anything to do with, uh, you know, emergency-related issues. But, but again, I will fully, uh, fully say that I, I am not an expert in fertilizer, so I, I would certainly defer to you. And with that said, I still think a yes vote is appropriate. Representative McKean. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair. We urge an I vote. And I just never thought I would see the day when Representative Williams wants people to be taxed. And that's what's so strange about this, is that we are now at a point where, where, with a safety clause, we make sure that we undo what the Department of Revenue is about to do. And in fact, what is remarkable, and sometimes the earth stops moving and you find out these things, but the Colorado Union of Taxpayers, which I know ranks highly, um, actually is in support of this bill because it actually says, you know what, let's make sure we're not taxing people who are not here to for tax. So I urge an I vote. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on House Bill 1329? Seeing none, uh, all in favor, of, uh, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. House Bill 1329 passes. Mr. Randall. Please read the title to Senate Bill 204. Senate Bill 204 by Senator Story, also represents Arnton Bird, continuing the implementation of supplemental accountability systems by local education providers for measuring public school performance and in connection with creating the local accountability system grant program and making an appropriation. Representative Bird. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Senate Bill 204. To the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oops. Representative Bird to the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. So members, we have a great bill to present to you today. I don't know how many bills we can say this about, but um, Senate Bill 204, which relates to local supplemental accountability programs, is probably one of the only bills to have gone through the entire Senate process, through committee, through the floor, and now even through um, House Education Committee, with a completely unanimous vote of support. This program allows local school districts to create their own supplemental um, accountability plans where they can really show how they shine, how they meet the diverse needs and priorities of the student bodies they serve and the communities in which they're situated. We're so excited about this and we're taking the work of about eight small rural school districts that worked really hard to collaborate and create a program um, that would be able to work and tell the state and other educators about all of their successes. We'd like to leverage what we've learned from this program and bring those benefits to the rest of the state through passage of Senate Bill 2 04. And with that, I urge a yes vote and your support. Thank you. Any further discussion? Representative Arndt. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think this is the best of Colorado. It's local innovation at the school district level for each individual district, taking charge of their own accountability and creating a grant program to make sure that they can get that done and report back to the state. We urge a yes vote. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 204? Seeing none. Representative Williams. Thank you, 
Madam Chair. Uh, members, um, I left my notes at my desk, so forgive me, but in that case, I do request the bill be read at length. First regular session, 72nd General Assembly State of Colorado Reengrossed. This version includes all amendments adopted in the House of Introduction, LLS No. 19-0685.04 Julie Pellegrin X 2700 Senate Bill 19 to 204 Senate Committees House Committees Education Appropriations A Bill for an Act Concerning Implementation of Supplemental Accountability 101 Systems by Local Education Providers for Measuring 102 Public School Performance and in connection 103 therewith creating the Local Accountability System 104 Grant Program and making an appropriation point 105 Bill Summary Note this summary applies to this bill as introduced and does not reflect any amendments that may be subsequently adopted. If this bill passes third reading in the House of Introduction, a bill summary that applies to the reengrossed version of this bill will be available at http leggovernment The bill creates the Local Accountability System Grant Program in the Department of Education, Department, to provide grant money to local Senate third reading on amended April 24, 2019 Senate amended second reading April 23, 2019 Senate sponsorship story, Todd, Danielson, Gonzalez, Rodriguez, Bridges, Fields, Jinnell, Moreno, Peterson, Sonnenberg, Tate House sponsorship Arndt and Bird, Cutter, Froelich, Kip Shading denotes House Amendment. Double underlining denotes Senate Amendment. Capital letters or bold and italic numbers indicate new material to be added to existing statute. Dashes through the words indicate deletions from existing statute. Writers that adopt local accountability systems to supplement the state accountability system. A local accountability system may include additional measures for determining achievement of the state performance indicators and additional indicators of student success, but the measures do not affect the accreditation rating assigned to a school district or the type of plan that a school must adopt. A local education provider may use grant money to work with one or more accountability system partners, which may be public or private institutions of higher education or private nonprofit entities. The department shall review applications and recommend to the State Board of Education, State Board, the applicants that may receive a grant and the amount of the grant. The State Board shall award the grants subject to available appropriations. A local education provider that adopts a local accountability system may submit to the department a supplemental performance report that includes information collected through the local accountability system. The local education provider may also use an alternative format for the type of performance plan that the local education provider is required to implement. The department must post the supplemental performance reports and alternatively formatted plans on the department's data portal. Starting no later than July 15, 2020, the department must convene an annual meeting of the local education providers that implement local accountability systems to share information. Beginning January 15, 2021, the department shall submit an annual report to the State Board and the Education Committees of the General Assembly concerning implementation of local accountability systems and implementation of the grant program. The department shall also post the report on its website and, upon request of a local education provider, provide information concerning the measures implemented through local accountability systems. Be it enacted by the General Assembly of the State of Colorado 1 Section 1. In Colorado Revised Statutes, add Part 7 to Article 211 of Title 22 as follows 3 Part 74 Local Accountability Systems 522-11-701. Legislative Declaration. 1. The General Assembly 6 finds that 7. A. The Statewide Accountability System relies 8 204 to 2. Arch Scale. State Administered Assessment 1 Results to Measure Public School and School District 2 Performance. Using these results provides a limited picture of 3 the successes of and challenges faced by public schools in 4 school districts and may not fully reflect the priorities and 5 values of local communities. Point 6. B. Several public schools and school districts in 7 Colorado and in other states have begun experimenting with 8 accountability structures that measure a broader range of 9 student competencies and system effectiveness, which provides 10 an opportunity for the state to learn from different. Approaches 11 to measuring public school and school district performance. 12. C. Public schools and school districts in Colorado have 13 also begun experimenting with additional measures of college 14 and career readiness. And 15. D. A broader-based accountability system is consistent 16 with the vision and framework adopted by the State Education 17 Leadership Council, created by Executive Order B-2017-001, and 18 may provide the information necessary to move toward the 19 Council's goals. Concerning student competencies and learning 20 environment characteristics. Specifically, the Council's Report 21 recommends the following with regard to Accountability 22, I, Continuous Evaluation of State-Level Accountability 23 and Assessment Policies, taking into consideration the 24 viewpoints of multiple stakeholders, 25, 2, Support for Ongoing Research and Evaluation of State 26 Assessment Systems, 27, 204-3, and for the experimentation necessary to 1, effectively eliminate performance gaps, give local value to 2, accountability, and drive meaningful, continuous improvement 3 efforts, and 4, 4, definition and inclusion of locally important 5 measures, such as engagement, employment, and higher 6 education attainment outcomes, and incorporation of these 7 measures into accountability policies. Point 8, 2, the General Assembly finds, therefore, that it is in the 9 best interests of the state to strengthen the 10 accountability system for public schools and school districts 11 by encouraging and supporting the development of local 12 accountability systems that may inform the continuous 13 improvement of the state's public school accountability system. Point 14, 22-11-702, definitions. As used in this Part 7, unless the 15 context otherwise requires 16, 1, accountability system partner means a public or 17 private institution of higher education, or a private nonprofit 18 entity, that works with local education providers to implement 19 education policy initiatives and that has demonstrated 20 effectiveness in providing support to local education providers 21 that is relevant to the support the institution or entity provides 22 in the partnership, which may include support. 
In designing or 23 evaluating measures of student success or system effectiveness point 24. 2. Grant program means the local accountability 25 system grant program established in section 22-11-703.26. 3. Local accountability system means a local 27204 to 4. System established by a local education one provider or group of local education providers to measure the two performance of public schools and school districts in achieving three student success and system effectiveness. Point four. Four. Local education provider means a school district, a five board of cooperative services that operates a school, a district six charter school, or an institute charter school. If a group of seven local education providers works together to establish a local eight accountability system, the group is referred to as a local nine education provider, but the requirements specified in this part 10.7 apply to each local education provider that participates in the 11 group. Point 12.22-11-703. Local Accountability System, Grant Program 13 Established. 1. There is established in the department the Local 14 Accountability System Grant Program. A local education 15 provider or group of local education providers may establish 16 and seek funding through the grant program to support a local 17 accountability system that supplements the state 18 accountability system. A district charter school may choose 19 but is not required to participate with the authorizing school 20 district in an application pursuant to this section. In determining 21 student success, a local accountability system may supplement 22 the statewide performance indicators by using additional 23 measures of achievement of the statewide performance 24 indicators and by using additional indicators of student 25 success. Additional indicators may include non-academic student 26 outcomes, which may reflect changes in student engagement 27 204 to 5. Add and mindsets. A local accountability system IS1 supplemental to the state accountability system and may be two designed to three. A. Fairly and accurately evaluate student success using four multiple measures to develop a more comprehensive five understanding of each student's success including additional six performance indicators or measures, which may include seven non-academic student outcomes such as student engagement, eight attitudes, and dispositions toward learning. 9. B. Evaluate the capacity of the public school systems. 10. Operated by the local education provider to support student 11 success, and 12. C. Use the results obtained from measuring student 13 success and system support for student success as part of a 14 cycle of continuous improvement. Point 15. 2. A local education provider that chooses to establish 16A local accountability system may apply to the department to 17 receive grant money through the program to use in developing 18 and implementing the local accountability system. The local 19 education provider may work with one or more accountability 20 system partners to 21. A. Establish and implement the local accountability 22 system. 23. B. Identify and develop appropriate measures for the 24 local accountability system. 25. C. Evaluate and provide evidence of the quality of the 26 local accountability system measures. 27 204 to 6. D. Alternative templates and tools for reporting one data concerning performance. 2. E. Analyze data. And 3. F. Assist with stakeholder communications. Point 4. 3. To participate in the grant program, a local education 5 provider shall submit to the department an application that 6 includes 7. A. The goals of the local accountability system that the 8 local education provider plans to implement or is implementing. 9. B. The name of any accountability system partner that 10 the local education. Provider intends to work with or is working 11 with in designing and implementing the local accountability 12 system. 13. C. If a group of local education providers is submitting 14 the application, identification of each of the local education 15 providers that has voluntarily chosen to participate in the 16 application. 17. D. A description of the individuals and entities within the 18 local education provider and within the local education 19 providers community, including families, that the local 20 education provider is working with to design and implement the 21 local accountability system. 22. E. The local education provider's expected timeline for 23 designing and implementing the local accountability system. 24. F. A statement concerning whether the local 25 accountability system will include a supplemental report of 26 public school and school district performance, as described in 27204 to 7. 11-704, 1, as a supplement to the school and school 1 district performance reports described in section 22-11-503, and 2, g, a statement concerning whether the local 3 accountability system will include using an alternative format 4 as described in section 22-11-704, 2, for the types of plans that 5 the local education provider, and the public schools operated 6 by the local education provider, are required to implement and 7 how the local education provider expects to share key. Planning eight elements, including priority performance challenges, root nine causes, and major improvement strategies, with the Department 10 for statewide public reporting on improvement planning efforts. Point 11. 4. A. The Department shall review each application 12 received to ensure that it includes the items specified in 13 subsection. 3. Of this section. The Department shall review the 14 services proposed to be provided by each accountability system 15 partner and determine 16. I. Whether the accountability system partner has a 17 demonstrated history of providing effective support to local 18 education providers, and 19. 2. If the accountability system partner is developing or 20 evaluating local accountability system measures, whether IT21 has expertise in measurement. Point 22. B. If the Department determines that an application is not 23 complete or that a named accountability system partner does 24 not meet the minimum requirements specified in subsection 4 a 25 of this section or if the department identifies an opportunity for 26 additional partnerships among the grant applicants the 27 204 to 8 Notify the applying local education provider 1 and allow the local education provider to resubmit the two application point 3, 5, A. Based on the review of the applications, the four departments shall recommend to the state board the applicants 5 that may receive grants through the program and the amount 6 of each grant. 
Taking into consideration the Department S7 recommendations, and subject to available appropriations, the 8 State Board shall select the local education providers that 9 receive grants through the program and the amount of each 10 grant awarded. Point 11. B. The amount of a grant awarded pursuant to this 12 section must be at least $25,000 per 13 budget year but must not exceed $50,000 per 14 budget year for a grant awarded to a single local education 15 provider and must not exceed $75,000 per 16 budget year for a grant awarded to a group of local education 17 providers. The department shall distribute the amount of each 18 grant over three budget years. Point 19. C. If the number of applications exceeds the amount 20 appropriated for the grant program pursuant to subsection 6. 21 of this section, the department in making recommendations and 22 the state board in selecting recipients shall 23. I. Ensure that at least one recipient is a local education 24 provider or group of local education providers that are rural 25 school districts, as defined in section 22-7-1211. Boards of 26 cooperative services that consist of rural school districts, or 27204 to 9. Charter schools that are located within rural school districts, 1, 2, prioritize applicants that demonstrate a previous two commitment of staff and resources toward development of a free local accountability system, 4, 3, recommend and select the grant recipients so as to 5, distribute funding to a broad scope of projects located 6 throughout the state, and 7, 4, when appropriate, encourage applicants to work 8 together toward shared goals, Point 9, 6, the General Assembly may annually appropriate 10 money to the department to implement the grant program 11 including money for grants and for the direct administrative 12 costs incurred by the department. Any unexpended and 13 unencumbered money from an appropriation made for the 14 purposes of this section remains available for expenditure by the 15 department for the purposes of this section in the following 16 fiscal year without further appropriation. In addition, the 17 department may accept gifts, grants, or donations from private 18 or public sources for the purposes of this section, except that 19 the department may not accept a gift, grant, or donation that 20 is subject to conditions that are inconsistent with this section 21 or any other law of the state. This section does not require the 22 department to solicit money for implementation of this section. Point 2322-11-704. Local accountability systems, supplemental 24 performance reports, alternatively formatted plans. 1. A. A local 25 education provider that chooses to implement a local 26 accountability system may submit to the department a 27204 to 10. Performance report for the local education one provider and for each public school operated by the local two education provider. A district charter school is not required to three participate in the authorizing school district's supplemental four accountability system or in related reporting unless the five charter school chooses to participate with the authorizing six school district in a grant application pursuant to section 722-11-703. The supplemental performance report supplements the eight information that is submitted by the local education provider nine and included on the performance reports described in section 1022-11-503. The supplemental performance report may include 11 information concerning achievement of 12. I. The additional measures adopted by the local 13 education provider through the local accountability system to 14 determine achievement of the statewide performance indicators, 15 and 16. 2. The additional local performance indicators of 17 student success, including system support for student success 18 measured by the local education provider through the local 19 accountability system. Point 20. B. The information provided in a supplemental 21 performance report does not affect the accreditation rating 22 assigned to a school district pursuant to section 22-11-208 or 23 the type of plan that a school is required to adopt pursuant to 24 section 22-11-210.25 c the department shall publish the supplemental 26 performance reports submitted by a local education provider 27204 to 11. section 1 a of this section on the data portal 1 and provide public access to the supplemental performance 2 reports that is adjacent to the public school and school district 3 performance reports described in section 22-11-503.4 2a a local education provider that chooses to 5 implement a local accountability system may provide to the 6th department as an alternative to the plan format provided by 7 the department a different format for the type of plan that is 8 associated with the local education provider's accreditation 9 rating pursuant to section 22-11-208, if the local education 10 provider is a school district, or the type of plan that the local 11 education provider is required to implement pursuant to section 12-22-11-210, if the local education provider is a charter school, a 13 plan provided in an alternative format must take into account 14 the data collected through the local accountability system 15 and any associated improvement efforts that the local 16 education provider implements. A plan provided in an 17 alternative format must meet the state and federal reporting 18 requirements, as identified by the department, that apply to the 19 plan types implemented pursuant to this Article 11. If a local 20 education provider uses an alternative format, a public school 21 operated by the local education provider may also use an 22 alternative format for the type of plan that the public school 23 IS required to implement, which format is compatible with that 24 used by the local education provider. Point 25. B. A local education provider that uses an alternative 26 plan format shall submit the plan in accordance with the 27204 to 12. Published by the State Board for Performance 1 Improvement, Priority Improvement, and Turnaround Plans, 2 including submitting the plan on a biennial basis for a local 3 education provider that is a school district and accredited or 4 accredited with distinction or a local education provider that 5 is a charter school and required to implement a performance 6 plan. Point 7. C. The department shall publish a local education 8 providers alternatively formatted plan on the data portal in 9. Provide public access to the plan. Point 1022-11-705. Local Accountability Systems, Report. 
1. To 11. Support communication and the ability of the state and of local 12 education providers to learn from the efforts of the local 13 education providers that choose to implement local 14 accountability systems. Before July 15, 2020, and on or before 15 July 15 each year thereafter, the department shall convene a 16 meeting with local education providers that implement local 17 accountability systems, their accountability system partners 18 if any, and other members of the community who are Involved in 19 designing and implementing local accountability systems to 20 review the implementation of local accountability systems. Point 21 individuals may participate in the meeting in person or 22 electronically. Point 23, 2, on or before January 15, 2021, and on or before 24 January 15 each year thereafter, the department shall prepare 25 and submit to the state board and the education committees of 26 the House of Representatives and the Senate, or any successor 27, 204 to 13. Committees, a report concerning the implementation of local one accountability systems, including a report of the two implementation of the grant program. The report must include three but need not be limited to four. A. Identification of the local education providers that five are implementing local accountability systems, including six identification of those that receive grants through the Grant 7 program and the amount of each grant awarded. A. B. Identification of the accountability system partners nine if any, that the local education providers work with. 10. C. A description of the measures and local performance 11 indicators included in each local. Accountability system, 12, D, evidence provided by local education providers, 13, including input solicited from community members, concerning 14, the effectiveness of each local accountability system, and 15, measuring the quality of the education provided by the local 16 education provider that implements the local accountability 17 system. To the extent possible for each local accountability 18 system, in reporting performance on additional measures and 19 local performance indicators, the department shall 20 disaggregate the performance results by grade level and by 21 student group, applying the same exclusions that apply to 22 reporting performance results on the state performance 23 indicators. Point 24. E. Identification of elements that are used in one or more 25 local accountability systems that may be recommended for 26 adoption by other local education providers and 27 204 to 14. Yeah. Recommend. Representative Williams. Thank you. Madam Chair, I withdraw my motion to have the bill read at length. Thank you, Representative Williams. So is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 204? Seeing none, the question before us is the passage of, of Senate Bill 204. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 204 passes. Mr. Randall, please read the title to Senate Bill 015. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Randall, Mr. Assistant Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm afraid one of the sponsors of Senate Bill 015 is in a conference committee right now, so I move to lay that over four bills. Mr. Randall, please read the title to Senate Bill 186. Hey, Representative Arndt. <laughs> oh, Representative Arndt again. Okay, Senate, uh, Representative Catlin. Excuse me, Representative Arndt. Senate Bill excuse 186. Me. Senate Bill 186 with Senator Donovan and Cornwall, Representative Arnton Catlin, concerning the expansion of agricultural chemical management plans to protect surface water in connection with making an appropriation. And now, thank you, Representative Arnt. Thank you. I move Senate Bill 186. And to the bill, Representative Arnt. Thank you. He, will you lay it over by so he doesn't I can do it. Do you want me to lay it over again? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't realize he wasn't in the chamber. Whatever you'd like to do. Do we have Representatives Froelich and Landgraf? Yes, we do. Okay. Sorry, That's okay. Representative Assistant Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry for the confusion, everybody. We want to make sure our sponsors are in the room. We move to lay over um, Senate Bill 186, one bill. Thank you. Mr. Randall, please read the title to Senate Bill 195. Senate Bill 195 by Senators Fields and Gardner, also represents Froelich and Landgraf concerning enhancements to behavioral services and policy coordination for children and youth and in connection with making appropriation. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Representative Landgraf. Thank you, Madam Chair, woman. I move House Bill 19195 and ask for a favorable Senate Bill, Senate bill 195 and ask for a favorable vote. Thank you, Rep. Whatever. Thank you. Is there any oh. further discussion? Oh, yes. Representative yes. Langrath. Thank you. Thank you. Suicide, as you know, is the leading cause of death for teens in our state. Um, in Colorado, Colorado is one, I lost my paper. Colorado has one of the highest rates of suicide in the nation, and El Paso County, where I live, uh, has the highest in our state. In addition to that, in 2017, suicide was the leading cause of death for children ages 10 to 24 in Colorado, and that's why we're bringing this bill. Do you want to go next? Representative Froelich. Thank you, Madam Chair. To echo Representative Landgraf, who has been working on this issue for a long time and on this bill, 
The need is great. I do want to share some startling statistics with you. Children's Hospital saw a 600% rise in pediatric ER visits after suicide attempts. Only one in five youth with mental illness receive care. About that same amount, 23% of American children have a psychiatric disorder. That's 17 million children. That is more than the total number of children with cancer, diabetes, and AIDS combined. And finally, we delay treatment to youth, an average of eight to 10 years before getting help. Senate Bill 195 is a coordinated effort to identify behavioral health problems early, to implement comprehensive wraparound services, and to comprehensively support pediatric behavioral health needs across departments. I ask for an aye vote. Representative Sandwich, Representative Landgraf. Thank you, Madam Chair. This bill accomplishes three things. It does implement cost-effective wraparound services for eligible children. When children get the appropriate treatment uh, starting early at the appropriate time, the results are better. And it actually ends up saving our state somewhere between 25 and $35 million. Children and youth will enjoy better long-term health outcomes when a standardized screening and assessment tool is created. And this will blend and braid all the various uh, funding streams together that we're using now, which leads to the huge savings. But the most important thing is the improvement to our, or the improvement to the health of our children and their long-term well-being. I ask for a yes vote. Representative Sandridge. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, yeah, I stand. I definitely stand in support of this bill. Um, I think that the people of of Colorado demand um, action. I uh, represent Northern El Paso County, and just like was was said, is uh, it's a epidemic. Um, epidemic in my area and um, uh, we definitely have to focus funds, focus our attention on our young people and taking care of this. Um, just not in my area where I've had some conversations about rural areas. It's increasing um, in those areas as well. So I think this bill will, will help every corner of our state and I urge a strong yes vote on it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 195. Seeing none, the question before us is the passage of Senate Bill 195. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 195 passes. Mr. Randall, please read the title to Senate Bill 186. Senate Bill 186, by Senators Donovan and Cornwall, Service and Sergeant Catlin, considering the expansion of American culture, criminal, chemical management plans, protect service water, and connection to the negative appropriation. Thank you. Representative Art. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move House, or Senate Bill 186. To the bill. Representative Catlin. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's an honor to serve with you. You too, Representative Catlin. <laughs> To the bill. Okay, that sounded really like okay. Well, t today we bring you a bill that's going to that it's not going to cost anything. It's not going to cost you because agriculture is going to pay for it. Agriculture wants to get in on this. Let me stop again. This is an opportunity for agriculture to do their own testing of surface waters. The state of Colorado is in the has always tested groundwaters so that we're not putting bad water into the ground. This gives the Department of Agriculture the opportunity and agriculture the opportunity to test surface waters so that we know what we're doing, so we know the water that we're sending downstream is good and clean. The last thing a farmer wants to do is to pass water down the stream to his neighbor's friends and relatives that's not of the utmost quality. quality. This bill will allow that. This is a good bill. Vote yes. Thank you. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 186? 
Representative Arndt. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a bill that allows the Colorado Department of Agri Agriculture to do exactly what Representative Catlin said, to monitor groundwater and uh, 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 what we're doing in groundwater with ag chemicals. We're also going to be, this will be a permissive bill to allow them to monitor uh, Ag chemicals and surface water and collaborate with CDPHE to make sure our waterways are safe and clean. We are GS vote. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 186? Seeing none, the question before us is the passage of Senate Bill 186. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 186 passes. Mr. Randall, please read the title to 238, Senate Bill 238. Senate Bill 238 by Senator Stan and Senator Marino, also President Kennedy and Duran. Concerning home care agencies and connection with requiring certain agencies to expand a minimum percentage of the reimbursements to the Colorado Medical Assistance Act, just wages for employees who provide direct care, requiring the Department of Health Care Policy and Financing to enforce training requirements and increase in, and request an increase of the reimbursement rate for certain services provided under the Colorado Medical Assistance Act and in connection with making appropriation. Representative Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Senate Bill 238. To the bill. Representative Duran. Thank you, Madam Chair. We would like to make sure that our home care workforce is reliable, well-trained, and adequately, adequately compensated, and I ask for a yes vote. Representative Soper. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I heard this bill in committee, and one thing that uh, certainly was drawn to my attention was the, the base that would be readjusted for uh, home health workers' uh, pay and the fact that we have a bill that's going through the Senate right now that would change the minimum wage rates, possibly to go up to $15 an hour. Uh, so uh, I move um, Amendment L026 and ask that it be displayed. L0, L026 is properly displayed. Please proceed. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. So what this amendment does is it considers the bill that's going through the Senate, and if that bill were to take effect, then it uh, basically excludes the, um, uh, the base and exchanges that with the minimum wage factor. So I would ask for a yes vote. Is there any further discussion on L026? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of L026. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. No. L026 fails. To the bill. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the question before us is the passage of Senate Bill 238. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. L Senate Bill 238 passes. Mr. Randall, please. Uh, Mr. M uh, Assistant Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the committee rise and report. You have heard the motion. If there's no objection, the committee will rise and report.
House will come back to order. One count. Mr. Randall, please read the report of the Committee of the Whole. Madam Speaker, your Committee of the Whole Big Sleep Report has uh, had under its research fund to participate with the Secretary of the House Bill 1329 has been passed in a regular of passage of 30 final passage, Senate Bill 186, Senate Bill 185, Senate Bill 204, Senate Bill 230, passed in a revised place, kind of 30 final passage. Who was in the chair? Kraftart. Representative Kraftart. You have heard the motion. There's one amendment at the desk. Mr. Randall, please read the SOPER amendment to the report of the Committee of the Whole. Representative Soper moved to amend the part of the committee of the reverse action taken by the committee and not adopting the following Soper Amendment L026 to Senate Bill 238 to show the pass the Senate Bill 238 is Representative Soper. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the SOP or Madam Speaker, my apologies. I move the uh, Soper Amendment to the committee of the whole report. Please proceed. Thank you. So what this amendment does is there's a a separate bill that's going through the Senate right now that will readjust uh, the um, minimum wage. And this brings harmony to this bill because there's a base level at which a home health worker would have to be paid. And so this just, uh, just adjusts the two bills in case the Senate version passes. So I'd ask for a yes vote. Representative Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask for a no vote. Is there any further discussion? The question, whoa, are you okay? Okay, okay. Um, the question before us is the passage of the SOPER amendment to the report of the committee, the whole. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Representative Mullica is excused. <laughs> Representative Hooten. machine with 25 I votes, 39 no votes, and one excuse. The SOPER amendment is lost. There are no other amendments at the desk. Mr. Randall, uh, please open the machine and members please vote. Arndt, Beckman, Buckner, Coleman, Hooten, Neville, Pelton. Okay. She's doing chilly stuff. Okay. Um, Rep Representative Hooten is, is excused. Please close the machine. With 41 I votes, 22 no votes, and two excused, the report of the committee of the whole is passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, we're going to proceed out of order for consideration of Senate amendments to House bills, and then that will conclude our evening. So if you are running to get chilly, please time 
your departure appropriately so that you don't miss some of the votes. So with that, I proceed out of order for consideration of Senate amendments to House bills. Seeing no objection, we will proceed out of order for consideration of Senate amendments to House bills. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1262. House Bill 1262 by Representatives Wilson and McLaughlin, also Senators Bridges and Fields concerning state funding for full-day kindergarten educational programs and in connection there with making and reducing an appropriation. Representative Wilson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Before you all gobble, I just want to remind you it's turkey season, and I move we concur. <laughs> it's gobbling for the children. Mr. Randall, Representative Hooten and Malika are both back. Uh, Representative Wilson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the Senate could not understand the bill we sent to them, so they amended it so they could. <laughs> they, did, uh, they did three things. Uh, the language makes it more clear that if the school district doesn't enroll enough children, either half day or full day, to use all of its uh, CPP slots, they'd be redistributed which was already in the bill, but now the Senate can understand it. Second thing that it did, it aligned the changes to the budget stabilization factor in the school finance bill, so that that factor was in there with the extra amount of dollars that we put in the BS factor. And then uh, finally, the Senate added an appropriation to the Department of Human Services so that they could uh, oversee the licensed preschools if they used the preschool slots, or if they had used the preschool slots for kindergarten, they'd go back to using them for preschool. So I move that we do concur. Any other comments? Representative McLaughlin, no. What would you mean? Okay. Nope, no comments. Okay, then no. the motion before us is to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1262. Right. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members please vote. McKean Sandridge, Geithner Froelich. <laughs> Representative McKean. Representative, what do you guys say? I, I just want you to know it's for the staffers. No, Representative McKean, that's a $5 fine. Representative McKean. Madam, Chief, Madam Speaker, you know, I, I really feel like these should be negotiable. <laughs> so, you know, when we start at five, and, and you know, we do this in judiciary all the time. We start at a felony, we go down to a misdemeanor. I'm just saying, I'm just saying when we look at, at, the, at the panoply of chilies that are available back there and how do you make that choice, I, that's got to be about a $2 fine. Representative, for you, $7. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I, I just don't think you understand how negotiations work, and, and this would be the power of the majority you know, in, inflicted on one of the poor minority. I'm going one, one dollar? <laughs> Representative McKean, ten dollars. <laughs> Please close the machine. Dude, we are not supposed to be laughing. <laughs> Um, I forgot where we are. Oh, Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1262 as amended. The question before us is the repassage of House Bill 1262 as amended. 
Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members please vote. Representative McKean. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I am generous to the point of a fault. And so, so I actually overpaid by $5, which I'm assuming is prepaying for the future. <laughs> and I would just like to be, to, I, I received the first fine of the year, which I thought was important to note that it was inflicted on a small business person. And, and the largest fine of the year, which also, as a result of this session, was likely inflicted on a small business person. Representative McKean, you are a gentleman and and a fine payer. Okay. Um, Baisley, Kraft Tharp, McKean again, and Valdez. Please close the machine. With 54, 55 aye votes and 10 no votes, House Bill 1262 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mm, Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to lay over House Bill 1076 one day to Wednesday, May 1st. Seeing no objection, House Bill 1076 will be laid over one day. Mr. Randall, please read House Bill 1202. House Bill 1202, Representatives McLaughlin and Galindo, Senators Janal and Priola, concerning the Food Systems Advisory Council in connection with making and preparation. Representative McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, we concur with the amendment from the Senate. I move. Oh, I do move, 1912-02, and we concur with the... Um, no, you move to concur with Senate move amendments to House Bill. to concur. Bill. I'm so excited about kindergarten. I'm sorry. I'm acting like one now. <laughs> <laughs> so I move to concur. Um, House Bill 1912-02. With Senate amendments. With Senate amendments. And can you tell us what those amendments did? Um, yes, the amendment... Um, the money goes to CSU for this program, and they wanted to make sure that it didn't affect tuition or um, anything else in there, so they just um, put the amendment on that this is only for a certain program um, at CSU. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is a motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1202. Mr. Randall, please open the machine, and members, please vote. Buck Hooten, Hooten <clears throat> Alex Valdez. All right, Representative Hooten is excused. With, please close the machine. With 45 I votes, 19 no votes, and one excused, the motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1202 is passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1202 as amended. The question before us is the repassage of House Bill 1202 as amended. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Representative Hooten, as Representative Soper pointed out, it's important to be fair. Are you working? I'm, are you working or are you just? You're working. <laughs> okay. okay. I will. I will let it go because you were hard at work at the um, chili competition. Please vote, everyone. Please vote. Great. But yes, everyone else should vote. Are we? 
differ? McKean. Where'd he go? Oh, please close the machine. With 41 aye votes, 24 no votes, House Bill 1202 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1216. House Bill 1216 by Representative Roberts, House Senators Donovan and Imperial Extreme Measures to Reduce Patients' Cost of Prescription Insulin Drugs in Connection with Banking Appropriation. Representative Roberts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that the House concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1216. And somehow the good Senator from Vail is here who made this amendment conveniently. I do think it was a good amendment, though, so vote yes. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the passage of Senate amendments to House Bill 1216. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Hansen and Sane. Please close the machine. With 53 aye votes, 12 no votes, the Senate amendments to House Bill 1216 are passed. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1216 on third reading and final passage. The question before us is the repassage of House Bill 1216. As amended, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Benavides, Hooten, Melton, Pelton, Sane. Which one's first? Melton, Pelton. Stay all day. Stay there till he. Hooten. Okay, everyone stay in their seats. <laughs> Melton and Pelton. Please close the machine. With 50 aye votes, 15 no votes. Are we, did we just repass, what did we just say? House Bill 1216 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1233. House Bill 1233, Brother Senator Sprolick and Care Avail. All Senator Chanel Moreno, considering payment system reforms to reduce health care costs by increasing utilization of primary care in connection with their making appropriation. Representative Caraveo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move we concur with the Senate amendments for House Bill 1233. Please proceed. Representative Froelich. Did the Senate water this down and make it wetter, or did they improve it and make it better? Occasionally, they do get things right, and so we won't put up a fight. Concur we will. Please pass this bill. 
Well done. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is Senate amendments to House Bill 1233. Mr. Randall, please open the machine. Members, please vote. Landgraf, Lantine, McKean. Please close the machine. With 49 aye votes, 16 no votes, Senate amendments to House Bill 1233 are passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1233 as amended. The question before us is the repassage of House Bill 1233 is amended. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Hooten, Hooten, please vote. Landgraf. Landgraf. Please close the machine. With 46 I votes, 19 no votes, no undershirt. House Bill 1233 is repassed as amended. Co sponsors. No, you do it. Okay. Right, please close that. the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1246. House Bill 1246 by Representatives Van Winkle and Kraft Tharp, also Senators Cook and Moreno, concerning the regulation of food truck businesses by local owner, local governments. Representative Van Winkle. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I move to concur with Senate amendments to Senate House Bill 1246, the bill of the year. Please proceed. The Senate did some very good work. This is the food truck bill. As we all have learned over the last several months that food trucks have a terrible time when they move from location to location dealing with different tax codes, different rules, regulations. Everything must be bolted down here, but if you move over here, nothing can be bolted down, things like that. Uh, the Senate did some, some pretty good work, made it a little bit more specific as to what we're looking for out of a study, and I ask for your yes vote. Representative Kraft Art. Thank you. I concur with my co-sponsor to, to concur with uh, amendments. The question before us is the motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1246. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Beasley, Bachenfeld, Buck. Please close the machine. With 56 aye votes, nine no votes, Senate amendments to House Bill 1246 are passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1246 as amended. The question before us is the repassage of House Bill 1246 as amended. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Please close the machine. With 65 aye votes and no no votes, House Bill 1246 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1248. 
House Bill 1248 by Representatives Weissman and Cutter, also under foot, concerning measures to promote transparency about the activities of persons lobbying the state government officials and in connection with the debate appropriation. Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that the House concur in Senate amendments to House Bill 1248. Please proceed. So, uh, members, I think one of the enduring lessons of this session is that bicameralism is an interesting thing. Uh, the Senate added two words, registered as, in uh, a few different places, as in who is registered as a professional lobbyist required to disclose, and a few lines later, an attorney who is registered as a professional lobbyist may not decline to disclose, dot, dot, dot. I don't read this as working any change in what uh, we intend in the bill, which is to provide that if you are an attorney uh, engaging in attorney-client confidential information, that is, uh, or, or representation, rather, that is one thing. And if you are lobbying as defined in the law, that is lobbying, that is not representation, and that is to be uh, disclosed uh, in our system as everything else ought to be. So uh, with that, I think we are in agreement and we move to concur. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us are Senate amendments to House Bill 1248. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Please close the machine. With 48 aye votes, 17 no votes, House Bill 12, amend, the motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1248 is passed. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1248 as amended. The question before us is the repassage of House Bill 1248 as amended. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Please close the machine. With 43 aye votes, 22 no votes, House Bill 1248 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1250. House Bill 1250 by Representative Harry. Herod, also Senator Danielson, concerning sex offenses committed by a peace officer and in connection there with making an appropriation. Representative Herod. Uh, I move to lay over um, House Bill. Oh, oh, where is it here? <laughs> Representative Herod. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that the House concur with Senate amendments. Please proceed. The Senate did some work. Finally. I agree with what they came up with. <laughs> no, the Senate, um, <laughs> I mean, do you want, you want me to talk about exactly what the Senate did around the, okay, I asked for an I vote. <laughs> the question before us is the motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1250. Mr. Reno, please open the machine and members, please vote. Buck, Buenteo, Liston, Humphrey, Wilson. Please close the machine. With 57 aye votes, eight no votes, the motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1250 is passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1250 as amended. The question before us is the motion to repass 1250 is amended. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Yeah. 
Fuck. <laughs> Please close the machine. With 60 aye votes, five no votes, House Bill 1250 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1315. Stuff. House Bill 1315 by Representatives Gonzalez <laughs> Gutierrez and Michelson Janay concerning the admissibility of statements by a juvenile. Representative Michelson Janay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Alice Gutierrez and I um, move to concur with Senate amendments. <laughs> Representative Gonzalez Gutierrez. Some of you are going to be thrilled to know that the one amendment they made was to uh, change the safety clause to a petition clause. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. That's it. OK. <laughs> the question before us are Senate amendments to House Bill 1315. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Frolick, Hooten, oh, they, and me. Please close the machine. With 65 aye votes, no no votes, the motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1315 is passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1315 as amended. The question before us is the motion to con uh, the question before us is to repass House Bill 1315 as amended. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members please vote. Ransom, please close the machine. With 56 aye votes, nine no votes, House Bill 1315 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1278. House Bill 1278 by Representative Lantine, also Senator Fenberg, concerning modifications to miscellaneous provisions of the Uniform Election Code of 1992 in a connection to the making and preparation. Representative Lantine. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As much as I'm loath to do this, members, I move to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1278. Is there any further discussion? Representative Van Winkle. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Just a quick question. What, what exactly did the Senate do? It looks as if they increased the appropriation for the bill. Representative Lantine. I was going to uh, tell you all about the amendments when we got to that, Representative Van Winkle, but no, they did not increase the um, appropriation. So, But I will tell you more when we... Well, go ahead and do it now. Okay, all right. So, I thought we were going to vote on the motion first. All right, I had a little start of a little poem, but I'm not as crafty as Representative Landgraf, so I'm not going to do that. Um, a couple of things that um, the Senate did, and I'll save the best for last. They amended uh, the recall cure section. Um, to allow proponents to, con to cure circulator affidavits. They um, um, amended to end election day hours at 7 p.m., which is the thing that we had a lot of discussion about here, um, and they had to conform that amendment. Um, they lowered the number of petition signatures for an unaffiliated candidate for statewide races for governor and U.S. Senate. 
and they conform the definition of the general election. Nothing to do with appropriations, though. I ask for a night vote. The question before us is a motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1278. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Pelton and McKean. Okay, please close the machine. With 50 aye votes, 49 aye votes, 16 no votes, the motion to concur with Senate amendments is passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of House Bill 1278 as amended. The question before us is the repassage of House Bill 1278 as amended. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Please close the machine. With 38 aye votes, 27 no votes, House Bill 1278 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. One more item of business. I move to proceed out of order for consideration of conference committee reports. We to will report. proceed out of order to, for the consideration of conference committees to report. Mr. Randall, please read the title of Senate Bill 77. We are on page nine of the calendar. Senate Bill 77 by Senators Periola and Williams, also Representative Hansen, concerning measures that affect the development of infrastructure used by electric motor vehicles in connection with establishing a process of the Public Utilities Commission, whereby a public utility may undertake an implementation of an electric motor vehicle infrastructure program within the area covered by the Utility Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move the House adopt the first report of the first conference committee on Senate Bill 77. Please proceed. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, a big thank you to my fellow conferees, Representative Gray and Representative Beckman. Uh, we were able to move uh, forward with a compromise with the Senate. I appreciate the ability to go beyond the scope. We found some great common ground uh, with the Senate on this bill, and I ask for your acceptance of the committee report. I am going to interrupt because we have not actually read this report yet. So Mr. Randall, please read um, conference committee reports. First conference, report of the first conference committee on Senate Bill 77, the report amends the re-revised bill to the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, first conference committee appointed on Senate Bill 77 concerning measures of effective development of infrastructure used by electric vehicles in connection with establishing a process to call the Public Utilities Commission whereby a public utility be undertaken with limitation of the electric conference vehicle. Conference committee report be printed in the journal. And then, We'll just do. We'll just do the one for now. Or Majority Leader Garnett, are we doing any other conference committees? Is this just the one? Okay. So. Okay. So going back to where we were, was Representative Beckman next? Okay, Representative Beckman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, we did have a good compromise amendment in the conference committee. Uh, I would have liked to have brought a minority report as a reflection of what some of the debate that we had, um, but I didn't get another person in the Senate. But I requested that we actually allow for the citizens to understand that this rate is going to be added to their residential customers to their bill. And so we would post it on their bill, and like we do for a lot of our uh, renewable energy, in Excel, you can make a choice. So the amendment I ran was to have an option to opt in, but more importantly, to disclose on the bill 
what amount of your electric bill would be to pay for these uh, charging stations. So I just wanted to mention that because I know that was a, a sentiment that many in the debate had, that we're not being transparent with this. The bill title is not transparent. People don't really understand it. And this would be a way to communicate to the public. And so I wish I would have had a minority report, but I did want to reflect uh, many of the things that we heard during the debate. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question is the adoption of the conference committee report on, on Senate Bill 77. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Buck, McCluskey, oh, it didn't go. There we go. Please close the machine. With 40 aye votes, 25 no votes, the conference committee report is adopted. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 77 as amended. The question before us is the repassage of Senate Bill 77 as amended. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Okay. Okay. Ransom. Please close the machine. With 39 aye votes, 26 no votes, Senate Bill 77 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read committee of reference, com, uh, conference committee reports. The first report of the first conference committee on Senate Bill 2. Conference this committee report reports will be printed in the journal. Rep Mr. Randall, please read the title of Senate Bill 2. Senate Bill 2 by Senators Wenner and Pemberg, also Representative Robertson Jackson, concerning the regulation of student education, load of servicers, and in connection with making an appropriation. Representative Jackson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that the House adopt the first report of the first conference committee on Senate Bill 2. Representative Roberts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, we just had one issue to work out in the conference committee, and uh, all six of us agreed that uh, this amendment we put on clarifies the Department of Higher Education's role in all of this, and uh, would appreciate an I vote. Representative Jackson. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and very much would like to thank our colleague, uh, Representative Larson. Thanks. Representative Larson. It was hard work, but we should vote yes on the amendment, but no on the bill. Oh. <laughs> The question is the adoption of the conference committee report on Senate Bill 2. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Melton and Sane. Please close the machine. With 56 aye votes, nine no votes, the motion to concur with the motion to adopt the conference committee report is passed. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 2 as amended. The question is the repassage of Senate Bill 2 as amended. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please vote. Tipper. Please close the machine. With 41 I votes, 24 no votes, Senate Bill 2 is repassed as amended. Co-sponsors.
Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read reports of committees of reference. Committee on Judiciary Officers and Merits. The committee recommends following Senate Bill 259 be amended as follows. Now, somebody be part of the committee to hold with favorable rule recommendation. Message from the Senate. Madam Speaker, the Message Senate. from the Senate will be printed in the journal. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to lay over the balance of the calendar until tomorrow, Wednesday, May 1st. Seeing no objection, the balance of the calendar will be laid over till tomorrow, Wednesday, May 1st. Majority Leader Garnett. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll do announcements and introductions. Representative Weissman. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Judiciary Committee members, reminder, we are not quite done yet. Earlier today, we recessed. Uh, five minutes after we adjourn here, please uh, let's all reconvene back in our usual room, 112. We will resume consideration of House Bill 1334. See you down there. I'm fine if you guys do that. I just, I think we should know what we're working on. Okay. Um, just a minute. More announcements and introductions. Representative Landgraf. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, tomorrow morning at 7.30 is the conference committee for uh, House Bill 1160 downstairs in either 107 or 109. See you at 7.30. Representative Hansen. Okay, um, members, we have one resolution. Are you ready with that, Mr. Randall? Okay, introduction of resolution, or not yet? Okay, we'll do Representative Herod. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Finance will be meeting upon adjournment tomorrow to hear Senate Bill 236. Representative Hansen. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Members of House Appropriations, another exciting episode about to ensue. We will meet tomorrow at 8 o'clock, LSBA, same bat time, same bat channel. We will hear a number of bills, starting with House Bill 1252, Senate Bill 5, Senate Bill 96, 176, 191, 228, 248, 256, 177, 232, and Senate Bill 244. See everyone tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Representative, any other announcements? Um, I think we're going to do before you put us, okay, Rep Majority Leader Garnett. Uh, please don't leave. Um, we have results of the chili cook-off coming, so please don't. Polls do close at 7. Yeah, if you're still in line, you get to vote. You still get to vote. We passed that bill. It extended the, I think it extended till, yeah, I think I think till like 10 o'clock actually, Mark. <laughs> We're going to read one resolution. Uh, Mr. Randall, introduction of resolution. House Resolution 1008 by Representatives Neville and Sullivan concerning the designation of a portion of Colorado State Highway 470 between mileposts 7 and 15 as the Dave Sanders Memorial Highway. Uh, House resolution, was it 008? 10 is laid over one day under the rules. 1008. So then, Representative Sane? Representative Hooten?
Are you ready? I am, madam. Oh, now this is... All right, Representative Sane and Hooten. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Are you ready? Yes. All right. We need Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, before we make official announcements, we would just like to thank all of the entrants for the time and effort you put in to providing our chamber with chili. Thank you so much for that. Every single entrant was absolutely delicious. Thank you. We'd also like to thank the Commission of Tasters uh, for lending us your very refined palates. Thank you so much for that. And with that, I turn over the results of our competition. Oh, yes. Representative Esgar. Before we get to the results, I want to take a moment because I helped at this last year and I know what a um, ex exciting time this is, but it's also a pain in the butt to put together. So I just want to give a special shout out and thank you to our caucus chairs for organizing all of this and putting Woo! this all together. Thank you guys. Okay, so here is the moment of glory. Listen very carefully. <clears throat> I need the people whose numbers on their pots are 12, 11, 19, and 5 to come on up here. And if you don't know what your number is, run back real quick and don't change numbers on anybody. I'm going to say again, 12, 11, 19, 5. That's not the lotto, but it's almost as good as the lotto. 12, 11, 19, and 5. And can someone get me a beer while we're waiting for those? Um, Unfortunately, uh, uh, Representative Sopair, there was not a, a sports betting application for Chile. I did ask for one. Is semi-automatic voter registration? What's your number? Okay. 12, 11, 5. What do you... Of course you are. Benavides. Who's 11? Who, oh, girl? There you go. Uh, okay, five. We're looking for five. Was it Christmas? It was Christmas. It was the green. Oh, that's weird. So there's number five. <laughs> I can't say it. No, Susan's 11. I need number five. Who's number five? Pot five. number five. They don't get to play. I don't know if it's my other one. Or maybe we'll just put five. I think five. We know you tasted five, madam. <laughs> we need to find number five, stat. I think five was in there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we actually I think it might be McKean. I. Okay, why don't you guys go ahead? Well, um. I'm 15, you just take the one off. <laughs> It'll give away something. We don't want to do that. Should, should we, we take a break? Should we take a, just a recess? Do you guys want to do it tomorrow? We can do it tomorrow. No. no. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, can I, uh, can we, we don't even know who to find. I, th I think it's McKee. Yeah. What did you say? No, and it's five was it? it McKean. McKean. Yeah. I think it's McKean. I don't have his number. Are the sergeants looking for him? What? 
We're going to have a very brief intermission. Okay, we are going to start with the other awards. All right. For Best Red Chili in the House, Benavides! 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 Yeah. For best green in the house, Beckman! Woo, Beckman! <laughs> and for best greenish white, <laughs> Gonzalez Gutierrez! Woo! <laughs> and that leaves Representative McKean for best in house and best in dome. McKean, 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 McKean. What we want to repeat it. Thank you, members. Thank you, Representative Sane and Hooten, for your work on this. We knew the House was going to win. Representative McKean, Representative McKean. Yes, ma'am. Are you serious? Best in house, best in dome. For which chili? Uh, yours, number five. Number five. I'm just saying it's a pretty killer chili. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, thank you for participating next year. Next year, bring it. This is this is more than I expected. I'm 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 speechless. All right, Majority Leader Garnett. My back is killing me. Majority Leader Garnett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that the House stand in adjournment until tomorrow, uh, May 1st at 9 a.m. Seeing no objection, the House will be in adjournment until tomorrow, May 1st at 9 a.m.